You might be going through the process of learning how to code. You might be struggling or not understanding why it is taking you so long to learn the basic functions or how to solve the problems without checking the cheat sheet answer first. Or you might even feel that you need to know the syntax by heart because you fail to remember exactly how they are. You look around in real life or in the deck community chat of the course you are taking up and you see everyone making lots of progress, answering other people's questions and achieving more things than you in the same timeline. You might have heard statements like programmers have a different way of thinking or if it takes you a long time to code then it's not for you. To be a good coder, you need to be creative, not because of the visual design, but because of the logical thinking. But you might believe that creativity is something you are born with, or it all comes down to passion. Learning how to code is an endless task. It takes time to learn it, and it takes even longer to consolidate this knowledge. I will point out seven reasons why this might be happening to you. The first main reason in my list is time. Similarly to what you will expect if you want to learn a new speaking language, like Spanish, is that it requires lots of time. It is not something you will learn after completing a 40 hours course. The problem here is that either we don't have enough time in our days to properly dedicate ourselves to learning a new language, or we are too impatient and we want to learn fast. There are moments in life when we need to take a decision that implies risking or completely changing our lives. You need to sit down and to be honest with yourself about if you really want to learn how to code, because if you do, you need to make time for it, whatever that means. If you need to lock yourself up at home every weekend for 16 hours because you don't have time to do it during the week, do it. Maybe you need to reduce your day job to part-time to accommodate time to study this new discipline. Only you can decide if it's worth it for you to do it. We tend to fall in love with the results, with the idea of us becoming a software engineer or game developer, but not so much with the process. This will never work if you only want the reward but not the struggle. Because in the same way I did not wake up one day just speaking English, the same way you won't be able to build your website if you don't put the effort in. Lack of confidence. We spend lots of hours sitting in front of a computer trying to understand why our code is not working when we have been following the video lessons step by step. It's easy to get trapped in a negative loop of thoughts. Too. We start thinking we are wasting our time by trying to be someone or something we are not. We lose motivation, we forget who we are, what we can do and how much we have learned and achieved so far. We focus on the fact that now at this point in time I'm not capable of understanding my own code. We feel incompetent and inadequate, we are too afraid to ask for help or we are scared of making mistakes. So we don't push ourselves to the next level or to the next challenge. Whenever we feel low self-esteem and are unsure how to act, we start comparing ourselves to others and wondering how other people are getting on. Maybe we do it to try to bring a sense of perspective and see if there are reasons why we should feel proud of ourselves or the opposite. But the simple truth is that we always end up seeing our neighbor's garden greener than ours. Most likely, your bootcamp colleague, who has already finished the final project, has gone through the same pain and frustration as you. However, she still found a way to keep working on it despite the feeling of losing focus. As a result of all of this, many of us get depressed when we lose focus or motivation. Feeling motivated, of course it gets you to act and makes this time a lot more fun and enjoyable. But I learned in my experience that we cannot depend on feeling motivated to succeed. Most of the time we are not going to feel motivated enough to carry on debugging why our application is not getting rendered. So I think sometimes we just need to pull ourselves into the study or working mode zone and just get on with it. 
you will feel motivated again once you manage to find the bag. Nowadays, there are so many different resources out there. We have Udemy, Skillshare, Code Academy, and Pluralsight. We have lots of YouTube channels teaching you the same thing. Then there are lots of boot camps that promise you to teach you everything you need to know to get you started in three months. We are lucky that it is easier than ever to learn new tech, but choosing a resource can also be stressful and overwhelming. I've been in a situation where I would start a new course and then I'll see another one and I quickly start doubting if I should do that one instead. Um, am I wasting my time not following the most popular video and watching this one instead? And yet, sometimes I don't carry on with either of the two options. Or I would spend time trying to find the best short to the point course possible rather than just choosing one with good reviews and start learning. In the same line, we have way too many different technologies. Every year, there is something new to try on. That's why I said earlier that becoming a developer is an endless job. If you are still starting to learn to code, it can't be complicated to choose which language you want to learn. I guess it is all down to what type of developer you want to be. Web, Android, iOS, game developer, what are your interests? Are you more into data schemes and architecture or do you like visual things? And most important, what fits within your identity? We'll talk more about why defining your identity in your study plan is so important. Answering all of these questions can help you narrow down your options. Finally, you probably don't have a good learning strategy plan in place. I think it's essential to have it well defined to help you fight all the struggles I mentioned earlier and to allow you to learn how to code more efficiently, quicker and better and to get the job you want in a shorter time. I will share with you eight main points I think your learning strategy plan should have in a follow-up video. So make sure you click the subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss it. Before you go to the following video, I'd like to stress how important it is to stop negative thoughts when we struggle to code. Negative thoughts compound. The more you get into the loop of believing you are not good at coding, you cannot understand it and you cannot code, the more you feel trapped, the more you'll be limiting yourself and the more you set yourself up to fail. The same is true for how you think about others. If you keep comparing yourself with how much knowledge you think other people have, the more you believe everyone is just smarter or quicker learner than you. Well, they probably just go through the same frustrations and struggles, because we all do. Remember, to succeed, you need to fail first. So the adversity is actually good and necessary for developing a solid understanding of the tech you are studying. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Let me know your experience. Are you struggling to code? Or maybe you have a tip that you can share with us. Subscribe to my channel for more videos about tutorials or honest advice or experience as a software engineer. Thank you for watching.